Good morning, folks. The northern departing sunspots have taken up a large area for days, but have failed to offer any large solar flaring due to spread and lack of magnetic complexity. Looking out ahead of the outer grouping, we see a new sunspot group come out of nowhere yesterday. It wanted to wait until it wasn't facing Earth to show itself. We'll go ahead and watch this zoomed in so you can see how much development and morphing took place. The magnetic fields became active almost immediately. It began pumping out plasma and then finally, this morning, a flash in 131 angstroms. An M-class solar flare, the lowest level, M1 only, but still caused a level 1 radio blackout. It may fire more as it heads for the backside of our star. Meanwhile, let's come back to the Earth-facing spots to see if they've got their act together. And they do not. Solid lead umbral cores, but the opposite polarity umbras are either too small, spread, or buffered by surface plaguing, and I see no other sunspots with high flare potential at the moment. Today we'll need to watch some developing spots just below the solar equator. Only other event was an umbral field snap at the incoming limb, nothing major, but out ahead of that is a pretty big filament, the dark rope dancing above the solar surface there. Top space weather alert today is for magnetic storms. The coronal hole stream has begun hitting this morning and we've got the density followed by speed and plasma temperature. Electron flux got knocked out in the first round, the energy in our system is building quickly, and instability has set in already with hours more to go in the stream and a potential minor CME impact coming later. So you will remember the departing coronal hole, bottom right, and the northern polar extension cutting down to face us. The day began with a stronger rumble in an earth spot location along the convergence line, and then after yesterday's news posted, it kept going. We now have three earth spot quakes hitting magnitude 6 in this period of time, meaning we'll watch this area for a few more days in case those are foreshocks. Meanwhile, the next coronal hole should be put on your radar as well. The opening is just now visible coming in at the limb. Top story is that Ceres lights are visible once more. These images are a few days old, but hey, it beats a six-month data embargo. We're going to get more photos soon. I'm doing a bit on the cratering here as well. Going to be a fun couple months with this sphere. When it comes to weather, how could we not start in eastern Australia? That convergence line we looked at for a couple days now pushed major flooding. 135 km per hour winds, leaving major damage and causing a few fatalities already. And unfortunately, the party isn't over for this event just yet. The convergence remains. In fact, it appears to connect to a few other lows in addition to the one just off northwestern Australia, which is also shedding moisture down through the land there. Some good news is that it will be a lighter day elsewhere. The convergence is offshore in the U.S., leaving a high-pressure node to the south that will bring some less intense storms along its western side. Check your local warnings. And the same goes for Europe. We've got lows to the west, but a largely clear continent until you get further east. Got your current conditions and shots of our star to close? Private event today at Blue Oak Elementary, and then our next public event for the Mobile Observatory is PrepperCon this weekend, Salt Lake City. Eyes open. No fear. It's 3.30 a.m. on the West Coast, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.